Hello, this is Lady Boulay and welcome back to Black American Lineage. Thank you for your support. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thank you for your comments and your thumbs up. Thank you for all you do to support the channel. Well, the election is getting close. Many people have already voted and many people are still trying to decide whether or not to vote. So today's question is to hold your vote or not hold your vote. What are you going to do and it's your personal decision and your personal journey and I wish you well on that journey. But as for me, I'm voting. There are those in the black American community who say they are not going to vote. They are voting the couch. They're voting for Trump. Many are voting for Kamala. But we are the community where people are almost encouraging you not to vote. Don't vote until you get something for your vote. Don't vote. Hold your vote. I want you to listen to this clip. It's time to hold the vote until we get something. It's time to hold the vote until we get something. Anybody telling you that you got to vote, be skeptical. I want you to spot the difference between the way that right wing conservatives are talking about voting and the way that people allegedly interested in progress are talking about voting. Every election cycle, someone insists that black folks for one reason or another should not vote. Hold the vote until we get some. But have you ever noticed that conservative white people are rarely, maybe even never told that they should be withholding their vote? In fact, this is what white Christian nationalists have been saying to each other in plain sight for decades. They want everybody to vote. I don't want everybody to vote. That's Paul Weyrich back in 1980. Elections are not won by a majority of people. They never have been from the beginning of our country, and they are not now. He's a godfather in the modern conservative movement, and he co-founded the Heritage Foundation. Yes, the folks who have been producing the document known as Project 2025 for the last 40 plus years. As a matter of fact, our leverage in the elections quite candidly goes up as the voting populace goes down. What they know is that their vision for America is profoundly unpopular. And as such, it hinges entirely on people like you not showing up to vote. So not only are black people telling other black people not to vote, but there are other mechanisms in place to keep you from voting. For instance, in the South, Many of the polling places near where large black communities are or where large numbers of black people live have been closed and they have been moved as much as 15, 25 miles away for people to, have to go and cast their vote. So there are all kinds of things being done to keep black people from voting, including scrubbing the registration rolls. So when you go to vote, your name is not on the roll. And if your name is not on the roll, you're not going to be given a ballot to vote. So there are all kinds of mechanisms in place to keep black people from voting because, as they say, when we vote in large numbers, we win. So everybody pay attention. Here we go. Federal judge orders Virginia to reinstate more than 1,500 to voter rolls. So Virginia had purged. 15, some reports say it was 1,600 voters from the rolls. Now, where do you think those voters came from? So a federal judge had to step in and reinstate those voters' rights because when you deny somebody the right to vote, that is called disenfranchisement. The vote is called the franchise. So when you won't let me vote and I'm an American citizen, you have disenfranchised me. But let's get into it. A federal judge ordered Virginia to restore more than 1,500 people to the state's voter rolls Friday after the Biden administration sued, claiming the removals took place too close to the upcoming election. The Justice Department claimed Virginia ran afoul of the quiet period a federal provision that prevents states from systematically removing voters from the rolls within 90 days of an election. So they're running afoul of the law. They're going to do it in spite of what the law says. U.S. District Judge Patricia Giles, a President Biden appointee, granted the Justice Department's request for a ruling ordering Virginia to restore the registrations in question at the conclusion of a hearing that began Thursday. 
with Giles declining the state's request to pause her ruling, Virginia's Republican Governor Glenn Youngkin vowed to file emergency appeals of the ruling all the way to the Supreme Court if necessary. Let's be clear about what just happened. Only 11 days before a presidential election, a federal judge ordered Virginia to reinstate over 1,500 individuals who self-identified themselves as non-citizens back onto the voter rolls, Yonkin said in a statement. Almost all these individuals had previously presented immigration documents confirming their non-citizen status, a fact recently verified by federal authorities, he, he added. Well, here's the thing. If they're not citizens, then they're not going to have the proof of identity. So they're not, they're not going to be able to vote anyway. Virginia is one of the states that requires you to have a social security number if you're registering to vote. Illegal immigrants are not eligible for social security cards, so they wouldn't have that proper identification anyway. Republicans have put claims of non-citizen voting front and center this election cycle, but available data indicates it is a rare occurrence. Non-citizens also face steep penalties for allegedly casting a ballot. Those people are not coming to this country to vote. They're coming to work. Either that or they're coming for free benefits or whatever freebies they can get. But voting is not their number one priority. Friday's ruling adds to a Justice Department victory in its similar lawsuit against Alabama for violating the quiet period. So Virginia, like Alabama, is trying to argue that if we can't disenfranchise these voters, then that would limit our ability to enforce the qualifications to vote. So what they're willing to do is risk disenfranchising citizens of Virginia who are eligible to vote in the name of preventing people who are not eligible to vote from voting. They have a system in place in Virginia that you have to show a social security number. Illegal immigrants are not eligible for social security numbers. So, they're, so their names shouldn't be on the rolls anyway. And they most likely are not. He's just doing something to justify taking people off the rolls because he is a Republican and he doesn't want the Democrats to win. So taking people's names off the roll is one of the ways to limit voter access to the citizens of Virginia who might be voting for Democratic candidates. This is Patricia Giles. She's the judge of the United States District Court for the Eastern District of Virginia. She is the one that required Virginia to reinstate those people's voting rights because number one, they were doing it during what they call the silent period. You're not supposed to purge the rolls 90 days before an election. So they violated that. And then they don't have any real proof that those people are not eligible to vote. And if they are voting, if they are eligible to vote, there's a crack in his system because they should not have social security numbers in Virginia if they are not Virginia citizens or if they are not citizens of the United States. More importantly, this is a black woman, a black federal judge that was appointed by a Democratic president. So when people are telling black people not to vote and don't vote and you're not getting anything for your vote, having somebody in an office of power who can advocate for you and interpret the law when you're here trying to break the law is getting something for your vote. Stop listening to these people who used to be rappers or who used to be in the red pill and the manosphere and all of a sudden now they are experts, political pundits. Please do not listen to these people. They don't know what they're talking about. There's more important things in the presidential office than just being president of the United States. Those people craft laws, and they shape the laws of this country one way or the other. The president appoints judges, and those judges impact our lives for decades to come. So we have to think about that too when we're saying 
I'm not getting anything for my vote. You're getting something for your vote when you have people in power who will at least do what is right, what the law says. Okay, y'all, thank you for listening, and have a good evening.